transforming your business model. How can you accelerate your transformation process and still keeping your company purpose in mind? And what technology backbone is required to automate at scale and to be able to predict outcomes to drive actions faster? Today, we have two experts answering these questions and much more. Evita Stope, she's the Chief Marketing Officer, and Vincent Visser, he's the Technology Leader at IBM Benelux. Welcome to our show. Thank you. So, Evita, we see that the world is changing very rapidly. Um, what kind of major tra- trends do you see converging and how do they affect organizations' business models? Yeah, thanks, Ronald. Yeah, so there's a lot happening. I think uh, we all know that we're approaching the two years that we're in this COVID-19 pandemic uh, situation. It brings a lot of vulnerabilities on the one hand and a lot of opportunities on the other hand. So um, we see that the kind of social divide of the haves and the have nots, the the inequality, that is something that is high on our minds and very uh, clear also in how we are dealing with the pandemic. I think topics like sustainability and also realizing how vulnerable we are as a, as a species um, and also our responsibility to the planet, to the people on this planet, uh, has become a major topic. You see that 20, 20, 22% of consumers, they actually also indicate that they think sustainability is a topic much more high on their list in considering what business to buy from. Um, And lastly, also, you see that the opportunities that this pandemic also brings up, strangely enough, is around digital transformation, is around the digital society. So we all needed to work and think differently um, because of uh, some of the results and some of the consequences of the pandemic. And that has also brought us to, to work differently, to think differently. We needed to come together as countries, as people from different backgrounds, Um, as businesses to really collaborate on finding new solutions. And this whole new way of thinking around business models, this um, new reality of not trying to find solutions by just kind of having one company, one party driving the solution by itself, but finding the solutions together. I think this new sense of collaboration, this new sense of innovation, um, that is something that really drives uh, the new reality of today. New strategic questions, new business models, And this is really the area where I think technology is a main driver and a major enabler to to create those new opportunities in this uh, this transformation. Indeed, social equality and sustainability are are really key topics and collaboration is key. You can't do it alone anymore. And as you mentioned, technology is key. So so Vincent, um, everything is connected right now. Everything means it's measurable as well. Um, So this forced organizations to change their business models. So what um, are the key technologies to change this? And also, how can they automate at scale? Can you give some examples? Yes, let's do that, Ronald. So thanks for having me. Um, So while driving here, I was thinking of a couple of client cases uh, to make it very practical because it typically works. Uh, So let's pick an industry that, especially the last two years, we're all very well of and and probably we've been working with that uh, every single day, uh, either as a consumer as a client um, or, or as an entrepreneur. And so that's the retail industry. Uh, so we've seen a, a massive digital transformation in that industry the last couple of years. Uh, the last two years, driven by COVID, acceleration. Uh, take, take an example of the retailers, they had to go move from on-site, the shops were closed, going to online. Uh, that meant so much in terms of predictability, availability of, of stock and supply, connectivity to their clients. Uh, so what we saw is a huge uptick in how do you scale um, that, that new business model for them? So thinking about an open platform with API set, being able to connect the end user to, to the platform, to basically the, the supplier, to the client. Uh, it needs to be measurable, as you say. So how is my uptime? Is it 100%? We cannot afford any downtime. Workloads are both on-prem and off-prem. So how do you make sure you, you can manage that hybrid kind of workloads, uh, both online and, and offline? And, and how do you make sure you stay connected with that client? Imagine then something goes wrong, how is the help desk involved? How do you make sure that groceries are delivered in time? And those are really the name of the game. And, and together with, well, IBM's consulting and the ecosystem, we've been able to, to do such level of engagement. But then again, we also now see the last year that that industry is being disrupted. Uh, we see very much niche parties like Gorillas, Flink, and others that basically take that business model and give it another steer. Uh, being able and, and stating that they can deliver within 10 minutes, 
which is pushing basically the boundaries of business models and capabilities even further. Uh, um, and to be honest, I've tried it and, and they are able to deliver in 10 minutes. So how do they do that? They have a very strong customer service uh, organization, uh, really um, delivered and, and scalable 20, 24 seven. When you put something, you post something, and I've done it myself, they reply within one to two minutes. Um, instant gratification for us, right? As consumers, they need a very strong front end, right? The applications that basically we use to, to do our groceries, but a very strong back end as well with no downtime at all and being able to scale and peak. And again, the workloads are often uh, offline and, and, and well, uh, online. And, and to that extent, it's important to have that scalable platform that allows you to do so. And also with those parties that we're working, at being able to deliver technologies, which clearly shows issues in the supply chain and instantly resolving those and minimizing the impact for the end user. And so a very traditional industry that was accelerated due to COVID, but now is even being pushed further in new business models and everybody needs to step up their game. So, and that's how technologies can help uh, driving, well, um, market share for the end clients in the end. Yeah, it's a great example how these organizations can even further improve the, the customer experience and use data and put this data in, into action. So what's coming next? IBM Think in the Benelux, um, it's just around the corner. I have already seen a great lineup. Um, maybe Evita, can you share what kind of use case we can expect um, from which type of companies? Yeah, absolutely. So we have um, basically the, the focus on two types of topics. So one is around business transformation and the other one around technology in action. So we have two days around those two um, in the Netherlands on the 3rd and the 4th of November and two days in Belgium on the 16th and 17th of, of November. So uh, the lineup uh, and just some sneak previews that we have for um, the Netherlands on the 3rd of November. We have Chris Bergmans from ABN Omro. He's the lead customer interaction. And he talks about this whole digital transformation ABN Omro is going through and how to go through that transformation and still keep your end consumer, your client, in the center of all of that, at the heart of everything you do and not, lo not losing sight of that. So a very interesting story from them. Um, the next keynote we have is um, from Arcadis, from Carolyn Moore. She's the global director of organizational and cultural transformation. And she talks about how to keep all of her people connected to their core purpose. The core purpose is around improving the quality of life and having that global organization and being digitally connected to each other. How do you make sure intrinsically they still connect uh, to each other and with each other? And the strategic consulting project that we're doing with them, that is, um, that is explained in, the, in their keynote. We have keynotes also for Shell and for Weibo Bank in the Netherlands. In the Belgium on the 16th of November, we talk with the KBC Bank, uh, Annette Boehm, who um, they're taking a really nice approach towards their skill set of people. Instead of looking at rehiring all kinds of new people in their organization for the new skills, they're looking to uh, really reskill and upskill the people in their organization and really making use of data and AI to, to be able to do that. Next, also, we have um, from Alliance, we have Sudaman Topan Mohan Chandralal. Um, He's the chief data officer from Alliance, and they really make data and AI as a key driver of their business rather than only uh, something that they talk about because they need to do it because everybody does it, but really took it as an essence on how to drive business value. And Vincent, what can we expect from technology perspective? Yeah, I'm very excited. So in the Netherlands, we're going to have Waternet. Uh, so water is everywhere and, and very important strategic, obviously. And they're going to share their story, as you uh, alluded to, on how to handle data in relationship to asset management. And uh, so the life cycle of assets, uh, which are very expensive, but need to be maintained very thoroughly. And especially when you're responsible for water management, like Waternet is, uh, in an area where more than a million people in the Netherlands live below sea level, you cannot afford to take risks. Uh, so you need to be on top of your game, uh, safeguarding those, those assets and how to do that and how you get control over your data information assets. Uh, so they're going to discuss how they've implemented an integrated platform uh, with hope of asset management, monitoring, predictive maintenance, uh, computer vision and safety. Uh, so that's going to be one of the keynotes I'm really going to look forward to. Uh, we're also going to have Rabobank, uh, which is a long-standing IBM client, but they're also um, yeah, revitalizing themselves and, and really how they have transformed into becoming a true service provider. Uh, so Rabobank, traditional bank, but now really upticking and accelerating becoming a true service provider. Uh, in Belgium, we have a health case, a health case story together with Innocence. 
Um, and that's all about um, yeah, basically protecting what is most valuable with AI and edge computing. Uh, so we're going to discuss prematurity, uh, which is something uh, leading to a lot of uh, child mortality under the age of five. And they're going to explain how they use AI uh, and with our clinical decision support system, uh, with intelligence that's given by the system in order to prepare for better treatment and timely treatments. So that's something that has a very social effect. Um, but that's going to be one that I'm going to look forward to in Belgium as well, and the impact of trustworthy AI in that sense. What a great lineup. Thank you, Evita. Thank you, Vincent. Uh, some great insights and a great lineup. I'm really looking forward to Think Benelux and invite everybody to join me. For the audience, thank you for watching and looking forward to seeing you next time.